Hi, this is Austin Nakatsuka, and this is going to be a pretty quick video demonstrating the use of the MyCore 700 uh, FACO, well, it's not really FACO, sorry, it is a um, cataract extraction device. And uh, essentially, our um, location was one of the first places in the United States to be using this, um, and uh, we have been trying it out here. And I've done maybe about uh, almost you know, about 15 to 20 cases of it so far. Um, still kind of getting used to it. Um, so this part here is a little bit sped up uh, two times just to kind of get us to the actual device here. Um, but basically what's unique about this device is that all of the, um, all, all of the mechanics are in the actual handpiece itself. And I'll show you a picture uh, later on, but there's no actual like machine there that does phaco emulsification. So there's no ultrasound um, energy that's going in there that's breaking up the lens. It's actually a mechanical process that's occurring through the handpiece itself. So it's all kind of in the handpiece, the, the phaco handpiece itself um, to remove the lens. Uh, and there's a separate piece for the IA as well, the irrigation aspiration as well. And, and the mechanics of it are sort of proprietary. So I don't know the exact details of how that works, but it breaks it up in there and has a very unique noise um, when it's removing the lens. Um, so this is a better um, better used on sort of softer lenses, so lenses that are basically pre-choppable like what I'm doing right here. Now this lens turns out to be a pretty thickened one. I would call it at least a 2.5, maybe almost even a 3 plus Brunessen NS. Um, so I was having a little difficulty here with pre-chopping it, but I just kind of spent a little extra time to make sure I could do so. Now you can do it without pre-chopping, but it's just kind of harder because um, it's a little more difficult to chop with this device um, and it's nice to actually have pieces to um, eat into. So okay, I slowed down here so this is all real time in terms of using this device. And yes, I'm going very nice and slowly because anytime you're using a new device uh, it's good to go slowly um, just so that you basically don't cause some problems. And so um, the interesting thing is the fluid runs uh, through a bag that's hanging um, and is elevated at a, at a, at a height um, level that is, and that is released, or the fluid is released um, usually by your, um, uh, your tech can unclip it so that the fluid will be actively running. And then there's no uh, f uh, foot um, pedal to actually turn the fluid on and off. So your tech will have to turn that on and off here. But basically, I'm, here I am kind of chewing into the, piece there to bring it up and I'm using a lot of my chopper here to bring it up there too because um, yeah I, I'm a little bit uh, conservative you could say on on the throttle here so they call it the throttle it's a little um, uh, trigger on the handpiece that you push down on to kind of eat away first aspirate the piece and then act to actually activate the cutter in there and so I'm very um, sort of conservative about that because it's a new device and I just careful and I have seen cases with a lot of post op corneal edema for some reason um, in, in some other some of my other colleagues who maybe push down on throttle like you're supposed to and so I've just been kind of careful about it and I chop it quite a bit um, throughout this whole process my finger is on the throttle and I'm pushing um, uh, I'm pushing on it to kind of give it the right amount of cutting and aspiration there um, and so it's, it's kind of slow going, I know, because I'm being conservative here, and it's a kind of thick lens too. And like I said, this device is not quite made for really thick lenses yet. Um, the tip is really sort of round, and so it's kind of hard to break through the capsule with this tip here. I mean, I think you'd really have to push down on throttle all the way and aspirate the capsule to cut a hole in it. And, and you certainly can, um, but, uh, but just touching it like you do sometimes with the other tip can break the bag and here it's not sharp but that's a disadvantage too because it, it's it's hard to kind of sculpt into the piece there so I'm breaking it up a lot with my chopping um, and uh, you can see the piece is kind of moving around it kind of works similarly in terms of the phaco dynamics uh, or irrigation dynamics of a Centurion or uh, any other machine Stellaris whatever um, but uh, so the pieces will come to you, but I, I, I do kind of use a lot of my chopping to feed it in there. Now, the one thing you can't hear here, 
but you will be able to later, I'm going to show you, is the sound this thing is making. It's pretty loud, and it makes a really loud clicking noise when it's going. And depending on how f much you're pushing down on the throttle or the trigger, the noise is louder. <laughs> so that's something to get used to because um, it, it can be a little annoying at first versus the kind of melodic tunes of the other Faco machines out there. Uh, but as you can see, it worked and we were able to get it all out, all of those pieces out. So the advantage of having all the mechanics in one hand piece there is it's, I mean, even you just have less stuff in the room. You, you don't have to roll this giant cart in the room, this heavy thing. And it's, it's good for certain things like office-based surgery or office-based cataract surgery or, um, or on mission trips, for instance, right? And it's just kind of less stuff to deal with. Um, so, uh, and possibly less expense too, although I don't know the numbers myself. Um, so here is the irrigation aspiration tip here. And again, very similar to, um, other ones that you would normally use. Now this spoon, by the way, is 2.4. So I actually extended it a little bit and usually I use 2.2 and I have to make it 2.4 for it, everything to fit. Um, the one gripe I have about this IA is that um, it's kind of thick and so is the handpiece. It's pretty thick so it doesn't spin around in my hands so easily. So it's not really sleek yet. Um, but I'm still using a throttle. So there's still a clicking noise while I'm doing this and I'm still using a throttle to kind of aspirate things. And you can see a couple times here while I'm trying to grab the sub incisional, you know, it's a little bit, like I said, it's a little bit bulky. It's hard to grab that sub incisional there easily. And then I grab the capsule a couple times there and I kind of don't like that. Um, but, uh, I am going to be honest with you that I have cut the anterior capsule, um, once, maybe even twice when I was aspirating and pushed, pulling, um, pushing down on the throttle and it, it does chew it up a little bit on the irrigation, irrigation aspiration mode. So I kind of learning that process there and I don't quite understand the cutting mechanism difference between the FACO part and the IA because it has to be less obviously but if it still cuts then that still seems risky to me and so and the polish setting I haven't quite figured out so here I have mostly manually polishing that posterior capsule there because I'm just kind of trying to be a little careful so if anything this is a what I'm showing you is just sort of um, the processes of using sort of new things right in the eye because right now, from what you can see on the screen, it looks similar to a regular FACO unit, an IA unit. Um, but it feels very different in your hand, and you'll see it because it's a pretty big, um, large hand piece in your hand. So it feels a little bulkier. But, again, it's only in your hand. You don't have this huge machine to deal with. So that's kind of nice. And so, by the way, this... Um, uh, this device is made by um, Zeiss, and I have no... Uh, financial interest in Zeiss. So because it's a bigger wound, I can inject the lens in nicely myself there. And yeah, no big deal. Um, but yeah, it works. As you can see, everything's gone and, and it works and um, the results speak for themselves. It works fine. Um, it took a little bit longer on the FACO part of it than I'm normally used to, but that's probably because I'm kind of a little conservative and I'm not pushing all the way down the throttle, but um, the rep was telling me, hey, you really got to push down the throttle because you're barely in the cutting mode at all. You're mostly just aspirating. And uh, so you really have to push down because I was push pushing down quite a bit, I thought, like at least 75%, but you have to get down to like 90 to 100% to really get the full cut there. So that obviously they're still working on, I'm sure, but to make it a little bit more streamlined there, but um, it works didn't have any complications here or any issues here. I have not broken a posterior capsule with it so far. And uh, again, try to use it on the softer lenses, the ones that are pre-choppable in general. Um, it's just a little bit easier because you, you can't really sculpt with this thing. If you are trying to break a lens um, primarily, then you need to um, eat right into the center and then chop it essentially either horizontal or vertical chop it it's kind of hard to vertical chop with it uh, but if it's pre-chopped already then it works just great and the the other thing 
is that again my other gripe with it is that you you aren't controlling the fluid with a foot pedal there's no foot pedal so that's a nice thing too you're not dealing with the foot pedal but um, you're not controlling it your tech is controlling it so you tell them when to clip the fluid kind of on and off just similar to what you would do for some of the retina um, vitrectomy machines um, so I have to tell him or her hey can you clip it on, on and off to um, to stop the fluid okay so everything worked out just fine and some extra touches there because it's a larger incision than I normally do just a little and injecting moxifloxacin at the end of the case okay so I'm going to show you some pictures now here of the actual device and what it looks like and then some video here so look that's the handpiece and those are all of the various um, cords there and then that's the fluid that's the bag that just hangs up there and here we see um what's going on here is we see the uh actual um, you can see me actually operate okay so that's the device and uh yeah, I'm sure it'll get better and better with time, and that was just my one experience with it so far.